All right, we'll go ahead and get started. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. My name is Hannah Cropo. I'm the content marketing manager here at Certiport. We're so happy to have you joining us for our first Adobe Certified Professional Academy webinar this afternoon. We are very excited to be joined by two amazing um, presenters and panelists from Adobe, as well as a representative from our own team here at Certiport, and I'll introduce them here shortly. Uh, so that everyone is aware, you're all currently on mute as this is going to be a recorded presentation. I will go ahead and open up the chat so that everyone can drop questions in to be able to chat with us. Um, ask us any questions about the resources that we're going to be presenting today. So if you have questions, feel free to go either into the chat or the Q&A feature and we'll make sure to address those um, at the end of our presentation. Now today we're going to be talking about free resources from Adobe that they've made available for educators. And today we have both Rosie Capron and Emily Simus here, uh, program managers at Adobe, who are going to be sharing these resources with us. So without further ado, I will go ahead and kick it over to them, Rosie, specifically you to get us started. Sure thing. And I will go ahead and share my screen. Um, I'd love to have a sense of who's here today. So if people in the chat, you know, if you want to say, uh, you know, where you're tuning in from or what you teach, uh, would love to know. Um, and of course, feel free to chime in anytime with questions or suggestions. Uh, when we, you know, send out this link to you all, the link to the presentation, or when we write blog posts throughout this whole fabulous, you know, month of Adobe, uh, we can include, you know, some of the, the resources that you might ask about in the chat or, or all that we want. So let us, let us know who you are and what you got going on. Um, I am super excited to share a bunch of resources from Adobe today. Uh, I will say that I am focused on largely, you know, teaching resources, curricular resources, um, professional development, um, not resources related to, you know, uh, the exams themselves or running the exams, your test center, um, sort of technical questions. Um, but we have the fabulous Tanner Morris, our product manager uh, here as well. So if you do have those sorts of questions, um, feel free to put them in the chat or save them for the end. And we can, um, you know, try to try to cover some of those. So on that note, uh, I know I don't have to talk too much about the why, um, why we do all of this, why you're here today. Um, you know, the fact that you showed up speaks to, uh, you know, what, what you care about. Um, but something that I hope to make clear in the presentation materials today is that this really is about creativity for all. Uh, obviously, because we are doing this webinar with our fabulous partners at Certiport, you know, our certification partners, uh, there's a heavy focus on resources that are for, um, you know, career and technical education or, or for folks who are very focused on, um, you know, students who want to go into design careers, want to go into, you know, video careers. Uh, but I hope to make clear that we also have stuff for the uh, teacher down the hall, um, for the administrators. For your students so this is something you know that is relevant to everyone in your building um, and everyone in your network so as you you know come across resources that may not fit for what you're teaching or the kind of students that you're working with we recommend that you you know ping, ping some of your friends um, you know share share the wealth so i'm assuming that folks here do have some, you know, familiarity with Adobe software products, and we've got a lot of resources to cover, so I won't, uh, won't be going into this much. Um, and of course, you guys will get these slides. If you aren't familiar with Creative Cloud, and if you aren't familiar with the sort of licensing options um, that are available to you, whether you're, you know, looking at this as an individual or you're looking at this as an institution, highly, highly recommend that you check it out. Um, these license, if this if this is sort of the first time that you're paying attention to Adobe after many years, you'll see that uh, a lot of these we have a lot of new products. Uh, we have a lot of new um, licensing models. You know, for example, we do have shared device licenses, so that students, you know, any student can use it while on campus. Um, can use Creative Cloud, you know, in your classroom or lab. We also have named user licensing, so that students can go and on their phones and at home keep creating things. So if, if, it, if you're unaware, or if it's been a while, recommend that you check in. Um, I will also just point out, for example, there's little, little bits of exciting news. 
um, that this audience might find interesting, like many new integrations with um, classroom tools, whether that's, um, you know, Canva or Blackboard or, you know, Google Classroom stuff. Um, I think as of this week, we've got an integration with Pear Deck, uh, which I know a lot of people are big Pear Deck fans. So that's, that's a kind of neat one. Um, so would love for you to familiarize yourselves. Um, we've also got Adobe Express, which is something that uh, folks tuning in today might not know that much about. You may recognize its old name, Adobe Spark. Um, it has evolved into Adobe Express and gained a lot of new sort of features in the time since. Uh, it's a very exciting evolution. So while Creative Cloud gives you pretty much literally everything you need to create a wide variety of, you know, sort of visual ex digital experiences, whether it's graphics, infographics, video, special effects, animations, web experiences. Um, Adobe Express uh, has is a lower barrier to entry. It's something, again, for that teacher down the hall, for the student who's not sure that they want to invest a ton of time um, into pursuing a creative career yet, or someone who just loves social media. Um, these are really fantastic tools for presentations, for graphics, um, for all, all sorts of things that you have to pull together as a teacher, whether it's worksheets and signs, um, a lot of worksheets. Um, like it really, it is a fantastic tool for educators. There are of course professionals who use it. Social media professionals are nuts about it. Entrepreneurs, same thing. Um, but it really was partly designed uh, with educators and students in mind um, and has a bunch of education specific features as well. Um, such as classroom deployment. Um, so I encourage you to, to, to check it out, even if you are sort of, you're a Photoshop geek or you're in a Premiere Pro or After Effects or these really um, awesome, powerful products. Uh, that doesn't mean Adobe Express isn't for you. Um, we've got, sometimes you don't have, have time to do something in InDesign. Um, and we've got a lot of fabulous templates um, to get you started, both just, um, on Express in Adobe Express in general, um, but then also education specific ones that really are meant for churning out um, materials that are of interest to you or giving students sort of starter files um, so that they can, you know, get into the get into creative flow mode um, faster. So something I just gave you a peek of for a second is the Adobe Education Exchange. Uh, one of the fabulous parts of this job is that we get to talk to educators. Uh, it's the best thing. Um, and it, you'd be shocked how often we find out that they don't know that this exists. People who love Adobe products, some of them, you know, just eat, sleep, breathe Photoshop, somehow don't know about the Adobe Education Exchange. Uh, and so it is our hub for teaching resources, professional development, um, community, all things sort of designed by and for educators. Uh, so if you aren't a member yet, if you haven't explored it, uh, or if it's been a while, um, definitely log in or sign up, sign up for the newsletter. It's a highlight of my week to see sort of the new stuff that that team has churned out. Um, I do have specific things within the Adobe Education Exchange that I'm going to be showing you, um, but I will for a second just show you what it looks like. So here's, for example, the home page. And like I said, we have things that are really for, um, you know, teachers of any grade or subject, um, elementary school, you know, to grad students. Um, and then we also got folks who are like, I know that I want to be an animator. I know that I want to be a UX designer or, or educators who are working with students like that. So we have a wide, wide range. We have these fabulous collections, which we'll talk about in a moment. Um, let's say, for example, ooh, that was a Paradigm one. Uh, let's say you're teaching we got math, let's say you're teaching, um, you know, a digital media class, and we've got a couple different ones for that. Um, there's so many materials on here that these collections are a really nice way to uh, find what you need and uh, be excited without being overwhelmed. <laughs> so two sort of collections that we have on the Adobe Education Exchange. One of them is very specifically for the Adobe Certified Professional Program. Um, this is the page that we're going to be adding even more to in the coming months. Uh, for example, I had an educator the other day say, wouldn't it be cool if that, that curation page you have on, on edX had a section that's for materials that educators, you know, not Adobe, but educators have produced um, 
to prepare their students for certification that they want to share with others because there's loads of that stuff on the site but we haven't surfaced it on this page so that was a fantastic suggestion uh any any suggestions you have like we are very open to it um if anyone here already does the um, adobe certified professional exams and you are hopefully uh aware of the exam objectives which are usually the, the first thing that we tell someone to look at if they think that they want to pursue certification or they think that they want to prepare their students for certification is go see what's covered on the exam of course uh and so before we dig through edx and talk about other things i do want to briefly point these out um one if you don't know that these exist please look at them uh <laughs> Um, they're, you know, incredibly useful documents. Uh, and I also want to point out that we um, not only have the, uh, you know, PDF versions, we need to put the 2022 one on there, um, but we also have these new web versions, uh, these new web exam guides that we've put together. Um, and Emily, actually, do you want to speak about these? I'm very excited about that. <laughs> Sure. So these are new, something we put together over the past year. And the goal of these exam guides is to help people who are um, uh, want to get certified, uh, become an Adobe certified professional, prepare for the exam. It's basically like the best check for understanding. If you've done all the studying, you've done the practicing, and you feel like you're ready, this would be a place to go and to go through each of the objective domains and uh, see if you can answer, see if you understand the topics. And if you don't, we direct you directly to resources on, on Adobe site um, that will help you go through uh, exercises or samples. We even link to some of the questions in the Gmetrics um, sort of prep uh, practice tests that you can go to to practice. So let me just talk to you a little bit about how those are organized. First, you'll notice that they are listed by what we call the objective domains. So like any great teaching tool, the Adobe Certified Professional exams are based on objective domains, and these were created by educators in the field that are subject matter experts in each of the Adobe applications. And so uh, Tanner, who's here, works closely with these teams to really check in with them on a regular basis to make sure that we're tackling all the most important topics that make someone qualified to call themselves an Adobe Certified Professional. And what we wanted to do was make sure that these were surfaced and readily available to you as an educator after talking to many people who work on um, who work with students around these exams, some actually use the objectives domains as a guide as they're building their curriculum. So here you have a list of resources you can point your students to. So these are things that you can use both for test prep as well as for lesson prep, and they're broken down for each of the exams that we offer. That's a great see. overview. Rosie really just gave you a quick tour. So if I yeah, go, just... go back, Rosie, and I'll just point out a couple of things. So as you'll see, let's see. So she's clicked into, say, um, one of the objective domains. You open up a toggle and it breaks down into all the subtopics which in that within that header and then the highlighted boxes are the links that we're directing you to um, and some and that and maybe point to also where you saw a sample question there we go sample exam questions up here uh, and then from certa prep practice tests cert prep excuse me and also um links directly into the help back sections of Adobe that are specifically about each piece of the exam we've, we feel like students should um, practice before attempting the exam. And if you have any questions about those or anything else we're covering, feel free to put them in the chat because I will go ahead and keep an eye on that um, and feed those questions to, to uh, Rosie or tackle them in the, uh, myself. So yeah, great. Thank you, Emily. That was super helpful. Uh, I do hope that uh, folks tuning in today do go take a look at these. Um, there's something that we are really excited to sort of iterate on. Um, it's been uh, something that people have requested for a long time to help them find those, you know, whether it's articles, tutorials, projects, um, you know, for these, um, you know, all these, these tools or concepts that show up on the exams. Um, we're also sort of working on the education equivalent of helping you find uh, not just, you know, kind of learning resources that anyone can use, but also the sort of um, curricular pieces, lesson plans that are related to specific skills and concepts. Um, so that's something to, to look forward to. And that will, of course, obviously uh, be shared on the uh, Adobe Professional Teaching Resources page on the Adobe Education Exchange. 
Um, oh, good, okay. Uh, the next thing I wanted to talk about is the Adobe Creative Curse curriculum. I knew I was about to get carried away in talking about this, so I wanted to make sure that there wasn't something else I was supposed to be talking about first. Um, I am so excited to show this off. Uh, it is a new collection of projects. Um, I think it's we have 10 projects right now. Um, We've been releasing them in phases. So some of you may not have heard about this at all. Some of you may have only you know, looked into this when, when we only had three, now we've got 10. Um, each of these projects, they, are, they were designed with certification in mind. Um, and we are working on sort of new and improved alignment guides um, in case you want to be able to check very specifically where certain skills and concepts are covered. Um, but each project is really centered around a creative brief from a fictional client. So you're having students obviously learning their Photoshop skills or learning their After Effects skills um, like they need to for the exams, uh, but they're also learning that domain one knowledge, uh, the things that the, the stuff that relates to working with clients that relates to um, uh, principles of graphic design, uh, you know, really foundational concepts in video editing or in animation. Uh, things that aren't you know specific to the software, but you really need to know if you're if you're going to to launch your career, and that we really wanted to make sure folks knew if they were going to be calling themselves an Adobe certified professional. So these projects are again centered around a sort of mock creative brief for a fictional client. Um, they come with loads of teaching and learning resources. Um, they're also very adaptable, both literally in terms of us having used uh, Google Docs um, and Google Slides to make these, um, but also in terms of if, if, if you really want to beef it up and have this be a project that spans many, many weeks, or if you want this to be a project that lasts an afternoon or two. I think these they were designed to sort of be, be easy to decide how deep you want it to go. Um, they're also uh, designed to sort of break down the uh, break it down by the design process. So having students not just go straight into, you know, Photoshop or straight into Premiere Pro to make whatever it is they need to make, um, but to actually, you know, have a process to take a moment to empathize, understand their client, um, you know, do some research, uh, you know, do some mood boards, like do, uh, do some of that that legwork that real designers do before they go ahead and just start making stuff, right? Um, you are making something for a client. You're making something for an audience. Uh, some folks who who've sort of early adopters of this curriculum have told me that they are taking it and then just plugging in a real client instead of the fictional client, uh, you know, sort of whether it's a cafe down the street or something saying, hey, here's what the, the fictional client pack looks like. They gave us logos. They gave us, this one doesn't come necessarily with a, um, I'll do one that comes with a, what's the word, design guidelines, um, brand guidelines. Uh, but say, hey, like we wanna have our students make something not for a fictional client, but for you, uh, can you give us your sort of version uh, of this and, and be our client, which I think is super, super neat. We're kind of hoping that would happen. Uh, but as you see, we've got this quick start guide that sort of just helps you digest the project. Uh, but then, of course, we've also got very detailed instructor guides. Uh, we, we made the quick start guide because some people, when they open up a 20 page document, <laughs> might get scared away. Um, obviously, it's really full of good stuff. But so that's we've got those quick start guides now, too. Um, so with really uh, sort of helpful, um, helpful introductions to the projects, and again, breaking it down into different phases of the design process, some tips on having your students put together portfolios, and then all throughout, we've got teaching tips, we've got glossaries, we've got, you know, here's something about the sort of principles of layout design, uh, we've got, you know, the sort of presentation slides uh, that you would use when, when telling students about the project and walking them through it. Um, we've got having you students make a project plan, uh, which, you know, in theory could help them not procrastinate, but we all know that won't happen. We've got things related to copyright. So your students don't just, you know, pull images off of, uh, off of Google. Um, and then we've, we've got, we do have more sort of technical um, resources as well and in, in, in design reference guide, things like that. So as you can see, this each project is really jam packed. 
I think we've got 100 plus uh, edX resources overall across the 10 projects. Some of them are, of course, you know, principles of graphic design is relevant to multiple of these projects. So some of them you'll use multiple times. Um, and again, you can, of course, edit these um, as much as needed. Uh, there's also other, I could talk about this all day. I probably shouldn't, how long do we have? Um, but there's also really cool things in here like uh, sort of video, these short video interviews with, uh, you know, real creative professionals, you know, the real graphic designer, um, you know, real, you know, video effects, visual effects artist, um, giving career advice, you know, speaking about how it is that they engage clients, what their sort of process is, the questions that they make sure to ask, the things that they make sure to consider, the sort of stuff that, that a student who's really new to all of this uh, might not think about at first, but uh, really helping them sort of uh, learn to think um, and work and create and collaborate like a professional. So definitely check these out. And of course, share feedback um, as you use them. It's something that we wanna to continue to grow you want to continue to evolve, if you have cool ideas for features, or if you just want to show us your version, uh, if you did what I said earlier, where you took it, but you made it your own, you had the, you know, a nearby business be the client instead, like, let us know, because uh, we are super excited about it. Um, yeah, I could talk about it all day. We do have a handy video that sort of helps to give an overview of it. Uh, and about the sorts of resources or sort of recommended process for using all this. So don't, just so you can be, you know, excited about all the, the, the resources, but not, not overwhelmed. Uh, so obviously that's really just a tiny tip of the iceberg for the sort of stuff that is on the education exchange. Uh, it is, it is jam packed. Um, you can also sort of look for resources by product. Like if you know that you are teaching video, how do I get rid of the rest of these? Um, and you wanna just find stuff that's for Premiere Pro, like you got it. <laughs> you can go find things for, for Premiere Pro. Uh, you'll see that uh, actually this page isn't a perfect example of this, but uh, we also have resources that were not made by Adobe. Um, obviously we produce a lot of materials, but we also have these fabulous community members uh, you know, people like you who have made great resources and want to make sure that others uh, can benefit from them. So we recommend that you browse. We also recommend that you share. Don't be self-conscious. Uh, I will talk about uh, professional learning for a moment. Um, this is an area where we have a lot of exciting stuff going on, probably even more exciting news in the near future. Again, something that a lot of people tell us that they didn't know about, uh, which, you know, it, it makes my day, I guess, when we get to tell someone who somehow didn't know about this, that these exist. We have loads of self-paced courses. Again, plenty of them related to Adobe Express that, you know, really anyone of any, working with any age group, any subject can use. Um, you know, some of them, we, we also, okay, we'll talk about that one in a moment, um, of course, have ones that are more for who I'm assuming is tuning in today, you know, digital media instructors. So we've got courses for Photoshop, we've got courses for, you know, InDesign, Premiere Pro, things like that. Um, Photoshop Crash Course, a real world approach. Uh, and so these are free, of course, like everything on the Adobe Education Exchange, um, self-paced, some of them very light lift, um, some of them, you know, multiple hours, um, but, they are a blast. We also, you, you may have spied this when I was going through the catalog, uh, that we also have um, these toolkits. So not just for, for learning, but if you want to turn around and teach your colleagues, uh, this, this is designed to help you, um, you know, lead your own professional development. Uh, so I think those are really handy. We've gotten great feedback. We plan on, plan on producing more of them. Uh, I will actually point out, that you may notice that some of the ones on here actually aren't really related to products at all, um, are related to, you know, just sort of best practices for incorporating creativity into your curriculum. Uh, basic principles of design, obviously that one is popular among um, Adobe Survive Professional folks because you do have to teach sort of foundational concepts in design. Um, things that are about, you know, flipped learning, distance learning, those were of course a hit at the beginning of the pandemic. Um, still relevant now. So definitely recommend that you peruse those. 
uh, something new, a new feature that was just added literally maybe last week uh, is not just our self-paced courses and our toolkits, but a new calendar where you can see all of the free professional development events that we are putting on, whether it's Adobe um, or it's you know a subset of our, our training partners who specialize in the academic space. So these are super neat, um, plenty of them, again, just totally entry level, uh, you know, good for anyone, some of them for people who really want to dig into Adobe Animate. Um, so this is something that has long been requested and finally exists. Um, so highly recommend that you tune in. I'm thinking I'm going to join the Adobe Illustrator one. Join me. Uh, and then we've also a new feature added to the site is a survey or a request form where if you want to reach out to Adobe and talk about the uh, professional learning needs for your school or district or university, what have you, um, a place for you to, you to reach out about that so that we can help to connect you, uh, you know, with a partner who could help to facilitate that, um, those sorts of, of, of resources um, to make it happen. So I highly recommend, uh, you know, reaching out. I did include the little sort of course trailer to remind myself to talk about this. Um, and Emily, you can help me speak about this as well, but we've recently redesigned and relaunched our certifying Adobe skills in your classroom course, um, which is uh, partly sort of introducing people to the program, also pointing them towards uh, resources like the ones that we're talking about today, also resources that are you know more about um, kind of how to facilitate the exams, how to get started as a test center, things like that. Um, Emily, do you wanna talk about some of the sort of cool new things we've added to it? Sure, um, I think, some of the things that we added to it that I find particularly value is more conversation around the value of certification. And we looked at it from the perspective of students and educators and did our best to actually incorporate their voices. So this whole course, if you decided to jump into it, we think it will take you up to two hours, maybe, if you looked at every video and read every word. But I think it's a great resource to come back to if you are engaging conversations with your students about why they might want to get certified, if you're talking to administrators about why, why it's important to start a certification program at your school. There's a lot of information embedded in this course, which could help you set yourself up well for those conversations. And what else do I really love about this new course? I'm just really glad that we brought it all up to date and made it um, um, really tried to focus more on bringing in those voices for you to hear. Yeah, and it also will direct you to some of the resources Rosie's covering here. We'll go back to the exam guides and really explain um, the nuts and bolts of the courses as well. So I very much encourage you to check it out. Awesome, thanks Emily. Yeah, I, I agree that the sort of incorporating more educator voices, of course the, you know, the original course was written by educators as well. So it's not like the educator voices weren't there, but now we've got a few really great videos um, you know, partly about the value of certification. We've also got other ones where, you know, people are giving advice for how they've integrated into their curriculum. Uh, so definitely check it out. Even if you feel like you know everything there is to know about Adobe certification, you may discover uh, some resources, you might discover some tips um, from the folks that we had, you know, participating. Um, there are a million and one more examples we could dig into when it comes to professional learning and uh, you know, classroom resources. Uh, I do want to talk about some other things that are not on the Adobe Education Exchange. Um, like, for example, just about, you know, community as a resource for educators. Uh, we probably, I can't see the chat, but if anyone here is an Adobe Creative Educator, do chime in. I feel like they tend to make themselves known. People are very proud to be ACES. Uh, so this is a fantastic program. It's a global community of, of folks like you who care about uh, you know, bringing creativity into the classroom. Some of them teach, um, you know, in elementary school, some of them teach in, you know, graduate, graduate school, um, and obviously plenty in, in the high school level. Um, some in visual arts, some in math. <laughs> uh, so I think that the, the, obviously it's, it's helpful to find people who are teaching exactly what you're teaching, but there's also something really neat about exposure to what, what people are doing in totally different disciplines. Uh, so, Highly recommend joining the community. The process involves uh, there's some some self-paced courses to participate in, and you know contributing a project. 
um, and I believe possibly contributing feedback on other people's projects. So it's a really neat community. You get sort of special professional development. Of course, you get a badge. Teachers love their badges. Um, and it's sort of just a, a great way. If you, if you feel like you're, you might be the only person in your daily life who, who really cares about uh, you know, creativity. Sometimes we do have people who are, who are sort of the the lone the lone advocate. Uh, I know that it can feel really nice to sort of meet your counterparts um, at other institutions and in other countries and all of that. Uh, I will point out a couple other sort of communities. One is Behance, uh, which I know so, a, a lot of let's say K twelve schools, for example. This is something that because it has user generated content, students don't have access to. So. Um, if you have students at the, the college level, I highly recommend that you get them on Behance. Um, it's, it's a fantastic way to find inspiration, to showcase your work, get feedback on your work. Um, also, of course, not just for students, but for yourself. Um, you know, plenty of you are, are creators just as much as your educators. So I know I'm gonna talk about a piece of this later, um, but the thing I potentially love the most about Behance um, is for example, that there's pretty much, I think literally 24 seven live streams on there. Uh, it's sometimes it's very soothing, like to just sit there and just watch someone make something really beautiful and complicated on Illustrator. Um, so if you're ever somehow bored, which teachers never are because you, oh, you got enough going on, uh, recommend tuning in for, tuning in for one of those live streams. Um, we've also just, you know, joined the conversation here I've provided links to the sort of Adobe for Education accounts on all the various platforms. We've got our various hashtags um, for those of you who are really into, again, connecting um, with other people around the world who, who also care about creativity and education, uh, who geek out about the same things as you, um, or to you know sort of stay up to date on news and, and, and developments happening in that world, whether it's cool new product releases or things related to kind of policy, advocacy, research, uh, recommend checking it out. Also, this is obviously not an Adobe program, but I love to give a shout out to CertiPort's uh, Certified Educator Community. Um, I imagine that those of you who are on here today probably found out about this webinar because we're a part of that community. Um, but if you aren't, now is a good time to join. Um, they've got a LinkedIn group, uh, and then there's, of course, the annual certified conference, which is, I'm not allowed to say that it's my favorite conference of the year. I'll say it's tied with Adobe Max. Um, I love them both for, di for different reasons, uh, but certified is a fantastic conference. Um, you know, the sessions are pretty much all led by educators, so there really is no, no better way to learn how to prepare students for certification than, than from someone who's really been really successful in preparing students for certification. Um, and for career success more broadly. So definitely recommend it. I imagine they'll have a virtual component this year for those of you who aren't able to make it out to Orlando, um, but there'll be, I'm sure, more news about, about that soon. Uh, there's also some, you know, kind of more miscellaneous uh, educational, inspirational content out there. Uh, again, some of it you know about, some of it you may not. So I just wanted to point it out. Um, one, for example, is, you know, the Discover tab, um, whether that's, I mean, I'll, I'll go to the Discover tab that's within the creativecloud.com site, um, which is just, or the Learn tab, either way, uh, which is just a really neat way to find, you know, whether it's interviews with creators or really, really cool, you know, how-to projects. Um, there's also things that are more just about career resources, you know, plenty of articles about you know, advice for folks who are, whether they're putting together their portfolio or they're freelancing, it's just a, you could get lost in here for quite, for quite some time. Um, and they're, they're just always churning out more content. And we, I know that there's plenty of educators out there who do take the uh, projects that, you know, are not education specific, but the sort of tutorials and, you know, neat things that Adobe puts together for, you know, the general audience, um, but then turns it into, turn it into lesson plans, uh, which is very savvy. Um, yeah, some of them are more, more just about inspiration, um, especially if you want your students to have some uh, insight on the professional world. Um, there's also 
I don't know how to bring it up, but in your Creative Cloud desktop app, there's a Discover tab there as well. Um, I didn't quite prepare to do this, so maybe maybe I won't do it today, but I beg all of you to do it later, uh, which is to take advantage of the in-app learning experiences, um, you know, the learn panel, the Discover panel that a bunch of project products have now, like Photoshop, InDesign, Premiere Pro, Animate, I think a lot of them um, have them by now, if not all of them. Uh, and so it isn't, you don't just have to do that thing where you have a tutorial in one window, the app in the other, uh, no, the tutorial and the project are in the app and it's super neat and just sort of helps you familiarize with yourself with the tool. Um, it's probably a great thing to do when you have students just sit in front of the product for the first time. Uh, I think you all probably remember the first time that you opened Photoshop or, you know, opened Illustrator and you're just, uh, over overwhelmed by the possibilities. <laughs> um, these are complex products and we've done, uh, we've made a lot of headway in making that sort of first experience something that, um, you know, makes you feel prepared and excited uh, to, to march onward. So definitely get in on the in-app learning experiences. Um, this is an obvious one, uh, but the Creative Cloud, you know, learn and support pages where you can go um, find, you know, tutorials, articles, a lot of the stuff that we've linked to in our new exam guides. Um, there's a lot of overlap between this content and the, you know, learn and, and discover tabs. Um, but this is obviously very comprehensive. You know, there's an article about every little, every little thing. Uh, I'll also talk a little about just other videos and live streams. I haven't put all of the channels on here. I wish I did. Um, but for example, the Adobe for Education YouTube channel, um, a bunch of the live streams that happen all the time, um, you know, featuring members of the ACE community and just members of the Adobe education team, um, those happen, uh, you know, on the YouTube channel, there's, there's, there's just loads of content, uh, all the videos from the courses that you can participate in on edX uh, are on here as well. So if you have stumbled, if you're participating in a course that you love and you really wanna be able to kind of share a snippet of it with a friend, you know, all those videos are on here. Um, and of course, you know, Adobe, um, Big Adobe and Creative Cloud, all of them have their own uh, channels as well. Um, if you're into video stuff, the Adobe um, Video in Motion channel is, is a great one. Um, there's just so much to cover in the, the video world that they have their own channel in addition to having some stuff on the Creative Cloud channel. Um, a lot of the, I already showed you this, but uh, Behance, live Behance, you know, workshops, um, then move over to YouTube. Uh, you can also, you know, interact with the folks who are doing the, the workshops. If you want to ask some questions, um, they do answer. They love it. Um, and then I just also wanted to point out some of our sort of research and thought leadership, things that aren't, you know, directly, literally, you know, curricular resources or professional development. Um, but we do a lot of research projects. This one is, has been a hit. Um, it was a collaboration with um, Civitas and with LinkedIn about the value of creative skills and the value of showing that you have creative skills, the sort of differences um, in terms of the attention and the wages that people who, who sort of showed off their creative skills got versus, you know, their counterparts who were perhaps equally skilled, but, um, you know, didn't, didn't show off their creative skills. Um, it's a really, really neat study. Um, and it's also if you feel like you want your administration um, or other decision makers to have a better understanding of why this work matters, um, that is largely why we do this, this sort of research work um, is to, to help you um, you know, have the have the information you need uh, to, have, to advocate in your world. Uh, we've also got the Creative Educator podcast uh, with Tacey Trowbridge. You really wish that she could be here today. She loves participating in sort of port webinars. Um, the podcast is fabulous. She has tons of interesting people on there. Um, she got several episodes that are that are, you know, with folks who use certification and that touch on that. So that's highly recommended. And then the Adobe blog, I actually, <laughs> probably not worth including on there, but I actually love it. I feel like I learned really interesting things about the, what's going on, not just in education, but in industry. Um, I feel like it's I like checking it out every once in a while. 
Uh, and then last, I do want to point out some student resources, um, though they of course relate to educators as well. Uh, one of them is the uh, our national and world championships, uh, which hopefully you all are going to get your students to participate in. Uh, it's the best thing. Uh, so these are the world championship is an awesome event that we put on every year. We've got students from all around the world. They come together. They've got I think it's eight hours to design something for a real nonprofit client who has given them a, you know, creative brief, um, which is just such a cool experience. And I know that a, a lot of educators, whether it's to prepare their students for potentially participating or just because it's a cool model, have sort of uh, adopted, um, you know, classroom activities that are sort of structured like the competitions, um, you know, designer, ask any designer and they often are working on a deadline. So it's good good preparation for the real world um, and of course to have a u.s national championship um but many other countries have have their national championship as well that's you have to win at the national level or be in, be a finalist at the national level in order to participate in the world championship um and then just a few resources related to career support um there is this doesn't have to just be for students you can get on there as well uh, Discord is confusing to me. Maybe I'm too old for it. I don't play video games, but uh, Discord is an awesome, you know, platform that that facilitates community and conversation. And we have the uh, Creative Career Community on there. It's a lot of students, recent grads, um, but then just really creatives of all stripes. Uh, whether it's sharing work, sharing advice, they do a lot of live streams, they do giveaways. It's just a really, really awesome place. They have a newsletter as well, which I recommend signing up for. Um, people do always ask me about this, so I want to make do a better job of sort of surfacing some of the scholarship opportunities, um, you know, that Adobe facilitates, uh, which I'm sure your students be interested in, um, and just also the Adobe Creative Residency, which is, I think, more for sort of recent grads, um, not necessarily for people who are still students, but I don't think that it's actually, you know, limited to non-students or anything. Um, I will sort of close by talking about the before we take questions uh, about the rest of the you know this academy that's taking place this month and of course Adobe Max. I somehow neglected to make a section on this that's specifically about Adobe Max, so we'll just talk about it now. Uh, for those of you who are you know in Los Angeles or willing to fly there, um, you will might be delighted to hear that Adobe Max is back in person this year, but it is a hybrid event. Uh, and so we've still got the virtual component, which is gonna be so cool. And hopefully some of you tuned in over the last you know, two years that we've been virtual, all of that content is still available and it's good content. So I, I highly recommend it, um, checking it out. Um, the virtual event is just jam packed. There is an education track as well. Um, Let's see if I can actually show you, not, not speakers, um, show you the education track so you can just see, uh, see some of what's going on there. Um, and I think the there are some sort of events and live streams and things that are not officially part of Max, but that are happening sort of during Max uh, so that educators who are, you know, tuning in can, can connect, share what they've learned, you know, get excited together. Um, so that's something I will include a link to that um, in the Adobe Express page where this all is. Uh, yeah, we hope that you'll tune in next week. Um, we're going to have educators, you know, sharing spe specific tips for teaching visual video or web design and preparing students. Uh, we'll have breakout rooms for those disciplines. Uh, obviously, the following week, we aren't doing uh, any webinars because there's Adobe Max and you should be tuning in there. Um, and then the following week, we have an event where we're bringing in uh, the, maybe the top two, but I think that the top one um, winner from this year's World Championship, who is awesome. Uh, she is from Florida. Do you have any Floridians here in the chat? Um, I really look forward to, to hearing her talk and, and anyone who just wants to learn more about the program, uh, about the championship. This is um, a great opportunity. Uh, hopefully you can convince your students to participate. They just have to have, you know, earned their certification in Photoshop, Illustrator, and Design, and they have to submit work. And you know, I feel like it's good to teach students to put themselves out there, to take risks, to be uncomfortable. A lot of students are, you know, are cagey about sharing their work, but, you know, you gotta ask any 
creative professional and they'll tell you, you have to be willing to put yourself out there. And I think getting your students to participate in the championship, uh, just, you know, submitting their, submitting their work uh, is a good life lesson, even if it doesn't, even if they themselves don't actually get to participate in the competition. So that was a lot of resources that I just threw at you. Long time of talking. Uh, we will be sharing out this link. I guess I'll just put it in the chat after this. Um, but I want to see if we have any questions. There was one question earlier, um, which you've kind of half answered. Uh, we will be sharing that presentation. It's an awesome ex express link. I don't know if you noticed that. Um, and so all those links are live. You'll be able to just click through all the pages that Rosie just took you through. Uh, there was a question specifically about where to find the information about the exam guides. And there's actually two locations. And I think um, Rosie's linked to both of them in the document. But there, there's a PDF version of them available on the Adobe Education Exchange. And there's also a separate website where they're listed live. So when you get that presentation, just go to that section about exam guides and you'll find both of the links. Yeah, and I'll put the, um, the page that's from our certified professional site, which a lot of educators may not have seen. It is sort of more catered towards folks mm -hmm. who um, are pursuing this as sort of individuals, independent learners, uh, but of course still helpful to educators. So I put the link there where you can find the um, exam guides. The mm -hmm. PDFs we haven't for some reason <laughs> made available for download on those pages, we will, um, but otherwise they are on the edX page um, and they are mm -hmm. also um, on certain parts website. Well, Thanks, thank you so much, Rosie and Emily, for, for sharing all of this fabulous information. I know that for a lot of you who I saw some comments in the chat, I haven't been in the education exchange before. This can feel a little bit like drinking from a fire hose because there's so many resources, which is why we like to host this session every year to be able to showcase what's new, what's happening, so that you guys can get in and get access to those and start using them in your classroom. Um, I've tried to drop as many links as I could as we've kind of been going through um, for some of those resources that Rosie has mentioned. So we have our um, certified educator community, we have links about the Adobe Championship, and then we also have links to Max and then the upcoming Adobe Academy webinars um, that I've linked there in the chat as well. So we'd love to be able to have all of you join us for our upcoming sessions um, and we will be at Max as well. So we're really excited to be able to be back in person this year and spend time with our educators and professionals learning more about the creative industry and um, ways that we can bring that energy into the classroom. So before we go, Tanner, I just wanted to see if there was anything else that you wanted to share or Rosie and Emily that you would want to share before we wrap up here. Yeah, thank you so much, Anna. Thank you so much, Rosie and Emily. It was great to be with you. Always exciting to see how committed Adobe is to teaching, to education, to creativity, right? Um, it's an awesome thing. For those of you who haven't planned on going to Adobe Max, I definitely recommend learning more about it. There's some awesome sessions that are geared towards education, just kind of helping you to get reinvigorated. So it's always great to work with Adobe. So I don't have anything else to add other than thank you. Um, this has been great to be with you. Um, we're always available with other questions or concerns. Look forward to meeting with you in future webinars this month. Awesome. Thanks, Tanner. Any final thoughts from you, Rosie or Emily? We'd love to hear from you too. I could talk about all of this all day. Uh, <laughs> and I will if you don't stop me. Um, I will add, uh, I know that in talking about Max, I focus on the education track, uh, but the rest of Max is, is, is worth checking out as well. I mean, there's over 100 sessions. Um, they've got obviously there's a sizable audience of sort of students and and early career folks you know aspiring designers or you know vfx artists and what have you um who tune in so there's a lot of content that is about starting your career about getting noticed about um the sort of nuts and bolts of being a freelancer because obviously that that's a common thing in the creative fields and, and has its um pros and cons and pitfalls uh so definitely share it with your students um, or your recent graduates, um, which kind of something for everyone in there. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Emily, anything else that you would want to share before we close out? Oh, no, I'll just echo what Rosie was saying about Max. It's been virtual for a few years now, which mm -hmm. I think is really one of the is awesome because um, it's hard to get to the event, but some of the sessions are really inspiring and you'll find yourself sort of traveling through a path where even if you leave the education track, you can get re really energized by some of the talks. I, I listened to a few from companies like 
Airbnb around um, creativity and belonging, which I found lessons in that one from last year that I just really applied in my life generally. So I'm just going to put in a plug for those as well. Yeah. Awesome. Well, yeah. we're really looking forward to being there at Max and the upcoming sessions that we have for the rest of the month. It's going to be an amazing month focused on creativity and being able to reinvigorate everyone as we go into this new school year. So we're really looking forward to spending more time with you. Um, as Rosie mentioned, we'll link both the slides that she shared as well as the full recording for this session um, in the follow-up email that we'll be sending out either later this afternoon or early tomorrow morning. So keep an eye on your inbox for that. If you have any follow-up questions that you would like to address with our team or with the Adobe team, feel free to reply there and we'll make sure to get in touch. So thank you so much, everyone. We look forward to seeing you the rest of the month. Thank you all. Bye, everyone. Thank you.